guys, this is OCP Communications. Uh, I'm not calling myself OCP TV. Yes, that's the channel where the new stuff's being uploaded, but it doesn't have the same ring to it. So, welcome back to. Well, not really welcome back. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. No, really. Uh, welcome to the next episode of Trash Cinema. And this trash, the trashy movie I'm going to talk about now is a movie that just seriously defies belief. The reason why it defies belief or defies superstition or defies every known law, the, no, every known law to man, is because the scriptwriter decided that this idea, or this movie that I'm going to talk about, was a great one and worthy of making a movie about it. The movie I'm talking about is Bloody New Year, released in 1987, also known as a time warp terror. Now, of course, the Time Warp Terror doesn't have the same ring to it, because then you keep thinking of Rocky Horror Picture Show, you know. Let's do the Time Warp again! Yeah, but, it's, no, see, no, they don't start dancing and doing the Time t time Warp dance in this movie. Maybe it would have been better off. Maybe it would have been better off if they did. Instead, you got a pretty slow, you know, not really slow movie. I mean, I've seen much worse movies than Bloody New Year. I mean, it wasn't as boring as, for example, let me think, um, Blood Voyage. Now, that's a boring movie. The Bloody New Year, it stars, it was directed by Norman J. Warren and uh, stars Susie Atchison, Nikki Brooks, Colin Haywood. And it was released through Academy Entertainment. Now the movie starts out with a very catchy song, you know, called uh, "Recipe for Romance" by a band named Cry, Cry No More. And I don't mind this song. It's got this kind of catchy tune to it. I've heard a lot worse, you know, the whole thing where uh, it's a uh, boy and girl in space. Take one boy, take one girl, out of the inner lover, then you shake it up, shake it up. That's the recipe for romance, that's the recipe for. Take one boy, take one girl, out of the inner lover, then you shake it up, shake it up. That's the recipe for romance, that's the recipe for romance. I like that song. So it starts out kind of interestingly with this kind of uh, 1950s style version of that song and with a uh, flashback sequence to the New Year's Eve party from 1959 when they're starting to get into enter 1960. And for some reason the movie edits to this chick who's, dan who's after all the they're done dancing and everything, then she goes to a mirror and she goes in and checking herself, oh, seeing if I look hot, and then, oh, oh ah! and then, and then you, terrible edit, and then you see this woman just jump up out of the water with some guy in the ocean. So you go now to go to this carnival sequence, I don't understand what's there, there's a bunch of low rent hoods, one's this fat British guy with a chain, and then uh, they get in the chase in the fun house, and then they escape, and they get, get they decide to go sailing with the friends, and... They end up going into basically. They sail with their friends around the. They get in the sailboat and something happens. I think I don't remember what happens. There's some some reason the boat starts to sink. So they end up on this island, and they go to this hotel. And they hear weird noises, like think people laughing, and there's no one there. And then weird, really weird fucking shit starts to. Oh shit! So all, all fucking hell starts to break loose in this fucking movie. I can't make sense out of this film. And I don't know if anybody else can for me. Because this movie just is a mind fuck. It goes all over the fucking place. It doesn't really care. Alright, this is what I'm saying. You have sequences where two people are chased in the forest or chased by evil laughs. Yes, chased by... <laughs> <laughs> it's like what the fuck? You see footprints in the sand, Jason Amber was like, oh my god! All right, you have crazy ass sequences where a net tries to attack some chick, and it's like trying to kill her or whatever, and some guy breaks her out of it with an axe. 
Then you have more ridiculous nutsoid sequences. One where this chick, she thinks she thinks she's normal all of a sudden. Here comes that fat British guy with a chain again. And all of a sudden, he just punches right through her stomach. Like, right through it. Like, he has superhuman strength or something. It's like, no, no. Oh, there was like, what the, what? And then she turns around. And I... I have footage of this sequence, but the, I, I decided there's so many weird-ass moments in this movie that I just decided to make a whole compilation video anyway, so don't worry about it. Might put some clips in here in this one, in this uh, here and there, but it's just, what is up with, it just punches right through her chest, it's right through her, hurricane, cool. <laughs> and then she, then she turns around, and she's got half a, I have like all this white shit on her face and she goes <laughs> It's like what the fuck? It's like basically she became all of a sudden she was normal lady normal little girl with the short crap haircut and now she's cum face Literally I call it cum face. You look at this footage, alright? I'm gonna show it to you. This footage right here. Because this scene made me laugh. Alright, so you have this whole sequence with this chick the pink dress, she's getting chased around by that by this other guy. The cum face lady comes in and she twists the guy's head really slowly, like you know <coughs> She like turns it around all the way three sixty and then she turns it around almost all the way three sixty again. It's like Sorry, you turn someone's neck around 360, you're going to break it right then and there. You're not going to break it halfway through the second 360 turn. Give me a break. So, ends up, this sequence, this lady just has her hand by the banister. Hey, you won't fucking believe this crap. So, enjoy. What the fuck? The fucking banister! The, you know the, the, the stair banister? You know the little thing that, you know, the... It's on the, on the end of the stairway, you know, on the stairs. You know, they'll be your decorative stuff, a little fur de lis, or... This time it's a snake, and it starts biting her. So you have a killer fucking staircase. Then you have the... Then they have this cum face is walking up the stairs. Here comes a guy with a gun. He shoots her, and it's... And it, why the hell... Her stomach farts when she gets shot is beyond me. It's like, BAM! <laughs> Whoa! That bad gas! And then he shoots her again, and then she's like, uh, 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 <laughs> Horrible! Horrible, bad acting there. Just like, you know, my stomach just farted! <laughs> Then the same crazy ass sequences continue. The house starts going ape shit. It starts throwing things at them in the kitchen. Things start moving backwards. Fucking, there's a plane that crashes in the forest that isn't even there, and there's an explosion. And it's, what did Wonder Woman's invisible plane get shot down? Then then you have fucking crazy ass shit with the fucking guy. He chases his girl. The girl in the pink dress gets stuck in an elevator, and the elevator eats her. And then it's what the fuck is up with this movie? And then, and then you have just, you just, it's just, it's all over the fucking place. I've never seen a movie like this before in my life. They're they're chasing. They're, they're being chased by some zombie guy in the forest, and then all of a sudden, you know, the zombie guy's going after the girl, and then his head fucking explodes. Like you don't have any explanation for it. it, it you know, the guy had a gun before, but I think he dropped it in the forest. So, what's the, how the fuck did the guy's head explode? What is he like? Oh gosh, she's so hot! Uh, uh, this is like, what the, what the fuck? Uh, 
So, I guess how you find out from the script screenwriter, how you get to figure out why all this sh weird shit is happening, why things are moving backwards, things are going all over the place. Oh, and the, the coup, de gras, coup de gras of ridiculousness in this movie is earlier sequence, which I, you would just love this. And laugh your ass off. Feel free to. There, you know, on, on a, there's, a, there's a drawer, and on top of it is felt, you know, felt, green felt or whatever. Well, the screenwriter thought that he should create, he should make a killer felt monster. Yes, the green felt monster from the hell. So she just turns around and then just just watch. Why the fuck does he go to the kid? The, the thing goes in there. The fucking the felt bleeds, and then then he gets thrown back, drawn backwards. And you don't hear anything, but he's just like, ah! <laughs> the green felt monster from hell. <laughs> Stupid! Stupid! You can't tell me you would be scared by that thing. You'd be like, <laughs> I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> Ah, green fish. Oh my god, man. You look like a killer seaweed monster. Oh god. Ah. It's Spinach Man. Oh god, Spinach Man's coming to get up. Kill me. <laughs> ah. Oh, man. So, like I said, back to why all this weird shit happens. I guess in the 6th, 1960, there's some guy who created some time warp temporal whatever bullshit bomb or some crap and they're in the airplane and I guess the airplane crashes on the pl on the island and it creates a time temporal rift a rift in time and space where basically everybody on the island living or dead is stuck in limbo so okay doesn't explain why things move backwards, why things break and then reform, or why this, why this weird shit. It doesn't explain it. Why the fuck does it? Why does the spirit possess people out of nowhere for no reason? I, it, it, there's no explanation for that. Why that shit gets punched through the stomach and then she's like all of a sudden cum face. You don't even know. It's just like the demons like the souls are like, whoa, whoop de do Let's possess somebody. Whoa! It's just like. All right, so then you have a sequence. It just keeps getting more ridiculous and ridiculous. They go into the the kitchen, and then the knives start attack, come to life and attacking them. Some zombie guys chasing after him. He slips. He falls into a fucking um, pot of hot water, and it, the pot of hot water eats him. And I'm not kidding. He goes, Argh! feet first. It's like what the hell. It's, this is uh, so they go into the pool room or whatever, and then the pool table starts rolling after them and chasing after them. The pinball machine comes alive and starts trying to attack them. The zombies are going after them. They're on the pinball machine. They put in the sound effects from the the, the carnival ride in the beginning, and so it's like whoa, 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 and then they get thrown through a window, and they're out. And about, and they're running on the beach, trying to get to some boat that they got. I don't know how. They're running for the beach, and then, and then, you know, the guy, the guy's an idiot. He's a fucking dumbass because the there's only two people left, one guy and one girl, and the guy is a, such a fucking dumbass that you know because he loves the girl in the pink dress so much, and she was because she ended up getting eaten by the elevator, and so he ends up going up there, and he she of course her spirit 
appears on the fuck, you know, but he doesn't think it's his spirit because he's a dumbass. So her spirit appears on on the, cl the the rock cliff's edge while he's about to go get off the island with this chick. It's like, don't leave me. Would it please come back? Come back to me. Come back. It's like, oh, I can't leave you. No. And then it starts running. It's like, and of course, the chick's next to you. Don't mind. It's like, no. What are you doing? No. If I was a girl, I'd be like, get back here, you fucking dumbass. This is not. Fuck, she's dead. She's dead. It's a trick. God damn it, you fucking idiot. So he goes out there. Of course, he ends up getting. It's a trick. And the fucking get, the British guy with the chain ends up having a, one of those. Uh, Propellers, you know what they use in the mutilator, in in you know the you know what I'm talking about, the, one of those. It's I don't it's not a propeller, it's a weed whacker. So all of a sudden they they find a weed whacker. This this zombie guy finds a weed whacker all of a sudden uh, on the island somewhere. I don't remember seeing any weeds being whacked because it was overgrown with everything possible flora and fauna you could think of. So he goes in and he goes. And you don't see it, but literally he probably just cuts his face and because he gets stuck in quicksand. But it doesn't look like quicksand. It just looks like regular sand. So he just falls in and he just slops into, like, I don't know, quick seaweed mush. So he ends up getting his face sliced off. And then the girl's pounding away. And, like, ah, and then like, ah, and she gets pulled underneath the fucking boat. And then the, next, the last scene is you see... <laughs> so, like I said, the fight... I just keep going all over the place. Well, this is what this movie does. It goes all over the place. So it's only fitting that this review is all over the place. So he ends up, you know, they're, they end in movies. They're all dancing around, like, you know, da, 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 da. It's like they're all, like, in a row doing the canasta at the end. And then the girl's stuck in the mirror for some reason. Help me, help! And then you have... That's the recipe for romance. That's the recipe for take one boy, take one girl, add a little lovin' and you shake it up, shake it up. That's the recipe for romance. That's the recipe for romance. That's the end credit song. And just whew, wow. This movie leaves you speechless because you're like, did I seriously just see, what the fuck? <laughs> the zombie makeup isn't that great, it's poorly done, the acting is subpar, but the film was not boring. It was entertaining for a little bit, I wasn't like completely like, bored out of my skull. But it's still a trashy movie, the plot makes no sense, it's, it's a stupid plot, it's fucking idiotic. Time warp stuck in some temporal rift on an island? Give me a break, man. It, it works for a little bit, but if, if they're living or dead and zombies, okay. But it doesn't work when everything starts going epic, going, you know, hey, fucking ape shit crazy and thing, and having stovetops eat people and crap. It's like, what the... There's no explanation for it. It's not particularly scary. It's laughable. It, I guess I could look at this movie as a comedy and enjoy it. Because I'd be like... <laughs> Uh, oh, there's Cub Face again. The score is overbearing. Uh, it's just like, you know, da, 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 stuff like that. You know, whenever the, some gothic score that shows up whenever Cum Face appears. And then, I, I just, you know, the British actors are okay. They're, you know, I didn't mind the guy who played the main guy who was a dumbass at the end and ended up dying. In a dumbass way, come back to me, come back. Some of the chicks were nice to look at, but I just, it, it, the film just does not make any sense. It goes on on its own. It just goes, it, it just doesn't even follow, a, 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 it, I, I don't even know what it follows. Uh, I don't even know if it even follows the timeline. It just completely just goes zigzaggy, or zigzagging across every single fuck. It just, it's like a sequence of random shit. We used to call this random shit the movie, or blood, you know, random New Year, or you know, the, the, the random time warp, the random, sh you know, crap island, the random crap, random shit island, the movie. It's just like, what the fuck is going on in this film? You know? So, I commend it for the fact that, you know, they had a low budget and they went all out, I guess. It's not increasingly, it's not like, 
ha, you know, hammer in the brain boring, you know, like Blood Voyage or some of the other horror films I've seen. So it, you know, would I say I hate the film? To be honest, I don't hate it. I don't like it. It's not one of my favorites. It's not that great. But I have a good, I have good fun with some moments, and I can laugh at it. So, in terms of a B movie, probably it's a movie that would probably be fun to make fun of with friends, which is why I'm gonna upload it on Fox Simplify sometime. There isn't any nudity, so anybody who's expecting any any teen A, you don't get any. But it, it's just, I mean, you got cum face, you got fucking killer pinball machines, uh, the green felt monster from hell. It, it, it's, 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 it just has to be seen to be believed. It's just fucking believable, you know. And you have the song by a, uh, you know, oh, it's unbelievable. Oh, if I only knew that bloody new you makes no sense. It's only a movie, but it's really, but it's crazy. Oh. It's unbelievable, oh, that someone would write a script like this. I finally knew that it was so unbelievable. I wouldn't waste my time with this piece of shit. Uh, that's a song from the Night of the Comet soundtrack called Unbelievable. Sorry. But anyway, just if I was going to rate this movie out of four stars, I'd give it one and a half. It gets more than Jacko, because Jacko is just painfully boring and painfully lame. This is lame, but at least it, it, it doesn't take itself seriously at, at any moment whatsoever. So it acts like it's a silly movie in the first place. I mean, you can't take it seriously. If they expected me to take it seriously, then, I don't, then they, they, they didn't approach it right. I mean, they don't, they, I don't know how to explain it. That's why I'm having a hard time. I'm stuttering and going... Because... Bloody New Year is one of those movies after you're watching, you're like, uh, what the fuck did I just watch? <laughs> but anyway, uh, I like that song, you know. You know, uh, take one boy, take one girl, add a little love and then you shake it up, shake it up. That's the recipe for romance, that's the recipe for... That's the best part of the movie, is that song, really? It's the most memorable part, and that's not a good thing. But anyway, you know, this movie just, just, I, I don't know, I, just, this movie just needs to get thrown in a black hole. I mean, it's, it deserves to be ripped a new one, that's what I'm saying, it's good for commentary. I almost want to say I don't hate it, but one and a half stars, because it's just not that great. It's, it's, if you can handle it. And you just laugh at it, okay, it's good for one watch. But is this a movie that I'll watch over and over again? No, sorry. It's not enter it doesn't have that ent entertainment quality. It was just a curiosity factor watching it at one night, like, oh my god, what the fuck is going on here? So, basically, Bloody New Year. Uh, that's my review of Bloody New Year, and I hope you enjoyed it. I don't know, it's a bit, it was off the wall, out of nowhere. <laughs> All over the place, just like the movie. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, check it out.